the beginning, if I may, about the interest rate decision, because um, I think that's going to be something that so many of our viewers uh, are going to be uh, really concerned about. And we had the comments, of course, from the governor of the Bank of England warning us to expect a higher interest rate rise um, next month. What should we be bracing ourselves to well, see? I, I think there's actually been a bit of misreporting okay. of, of what Andrew said in Washington uh, yesterday, because mm -hmm. he was talking about... Um, the interest rate decision relative to what they were expecting back in August mm -hmm. when they did their last monetary policy report. So he wasn't saying interest rates are going to have to rise even more than we thought mm -hmm. last week. Uh, really, he was just reflecting the fact that uh, the pressures on interest rates have risen in the past couple of months for reasons we all know, uh, what's been happening in Ukraine and the, the mini-budget. Um, and he was merely saying to his audience that uh, mm -hmm. they, they would need to be raising bank rates. So I don't think people should read anything from that into their mortgage rates mm -hmm. or anything. Uh, what is at issue for their mortgage rates is really what's happening to market interest rates. They've already moved up in anticipation of the bank's future decisions and also reflecting the turmoil in bond markets which followed the uh, mini-budget the other week. I mean, you, you, you're talking there about the turmoil in the markets following the mini-budget. I mean, whenever I have government ministers, you know, here in the studio, they, they try and really talk about the global forces, which you acknowledge too, you know, in Ukraine and the energy yeah. prices. But it is correct to say that a lot of this turmoil is directly caused by the government policy that we've seen. Uh, yes, I, 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 frankly, I think it's disingenuous to say it's all a global phenomenon. It's not. There is a global element. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the general level of interest rates, they've risen by about three percentage points since mm -hmm. the beginning of the year. Um, three quarters of that, two thirds maybe, is the world mm -hmm. and what's happening in the Ukraine, but the rest of it is a UK specific phenomenon. And it's particularly developed since the mini-budget. So it's clearly driven by that, in my view. And basically, we've, we've moved from looking not too dissimilar from the US or Germany as a, uh, a proposition to lend to, to looking more like Italy and Greece. Right. Well, that's not at all, doesn't it, really? Um, what did you um, make of the new Chancellor's comments uh, yesterday? Do you think they will have gone some way to um, placating the markets? Well, I, I thought he set the right tone, mm -hmm. uh, and importantly, he recognised that there were some difficult decisions ahead he was going to have to make, pretty quickly, I have to say, in the next couple of weeks, uh, on both taxes and spending. And the, the important thing to realise is not simply just a case of... Uh, changing the identity of the Chancellor or bringing forward the Office of Budget Responsibilities report. It's actually the contents and how the numbers add up. And even before the mini-budget, in the medium term, there would have been a hole in the public finances of £30 billion or so, to which the government laid on a, another 45, subsequently reduced to uh, £43 billion. Now, they've done a U-turn on a little less than 20 billion of that. So there's still 40 billion they've got to find from somewhere. That's very chunky. Mm. Uh, so that's why he's right to say there's some uh, very difficult decisions. And the crucial thing will be whatever uh, is published in a couple of weeks' time on October the 31st is coherent mm. and that the markets see there is a viable... Uh, and plausible plan for making everything fit together. I always feel um, that, you know, in the kind of these kind of political shows, you end up throwing around numbers, 40 billion, and it's quite yeah. hard to realise what the enormity of what we're talking about. I mean, 40 yes. billion pounds. Can you put it in any context, the kind of, you know, squeeze uh, that we'd have to see uh, to, to fill that gap? OK, well, 40 billion is about 2% uh, of annual production mm -hmm. of uh, the UK. Um, a cut in income tax of one percentage point, which is one of the things that was in the, the mini budget, bringing that forward one year, that costs about five billion. Mm. Uh, so forty billion is uh, is quite a lot if you want to think about it in terms of uh, government spending. Uh, you're getting on for uh, five or six percent cuts in government spending, um, and it should be said. Uh, obviously, obviously, the government are talking about you know, efficiency savings and stuff like that. The existing cash limits were set a year ago when inflation was expected to stay low. 
Uh, pay increases in the public sector are expected to be 2 or 3%, which is not sustainable now. Pay in the private sector is growing at about 7%. Mm. Um, so already there is a big squeeze in real terms on public spending. And if you're going to layer more on, mm. that has to mean real cuts. You can't find it from eliminating waste, which will no doubt be the, um, the mantra. Uh, but there would have to be serious decisions about things to, uh, to stop doing. Serious decisions, including potentially about the NHS. I was interested to read your comments about, you know, if you wanted to get the share of government spending to GDP down, you have to be prepared, say, to move away from our own health service, free at the point of delivery, to one funded by social insurance. Uh, yeah, I, I have to, again, slightly mischievous yeah. reporting. This was part of a long mm -hmm. interview with your economics correspondent, Ed Conway. I have to take it up with him. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> but, 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 the, but the essence mm. of the point that I was making is that um, actually the share of government spending in GDP hasn't changed very much mm -hmm. over 50 years, but beneath the surface there's some very big trends, and in particular... The share of health and spending on uh, welfare mm -hmm. has risen from about a quarter of that to half mm -hmm. of that. And that largely reflects demographics. Mm -hmm. We have an older population uh, and we've also decided to pay them better pensions. Mm -hmm. That's going to continue in the future. In the past, that was accommodated by falling defence spending, falling debt interest spending, falling uh, public capital investment. All three of those elements are mm. programmed to go in the other way now. So it's a challenge even to hold the share of government spending constant. And to actually alone. make cuts. But to make cuts, and, it, and it, the point that I wanted to stress is you have to th decide, actually, we want to do things differently. You can't achieve these things simply yeah. by finding a billion here, a billion there. Um, do you think... We are in a recession? Or do you think... I, 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 in, in terms of the um, indicators, the economy is pretty much flatlining to slightly contracting. Mm. Looking forward, I think it's pretty inevitable that there will need to be a period of, uh, of, of contraction. How big, we don't know. Uh, but in some sense, there needs to be, because the labour market is very tight. Vacancies are still at a very high level. Mm -hmm. And that reflects the fact that half a million people left the workforce as a result of the pandemic. And if we see a squeeze in public spending and in the fiscal tightening, could that make the recession more difficult, longer? Uh, well, if you have a tighter fiscal position, that tends to mean lower demand, mm -hmm. uh, lower output. But there's an offset to that, because... The Bank of England can then run a looser monetary policy. So it's the flip side of what we saw with the mini budget. Mm. So the mini budget was basically something that was going to expand demand, but in order for the Bank of England to meet its inflation target, it had to offset the consequences of that by uh, prospectively raising bank rate more. Uh, so you, you can change the mix. Mm -hmm. But the overall level of demand has to be consistent with the economy's supply capacity. Um, just finally, we'll have Andrew Griffith on the show uh, a little later. Uh, he is one of the few people to have survived in the Treasury uh, under mm. Kwasi Kwarteng and also the new Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt. What would you ask him? What would you like to find out? Well, I would like to find out what their plan is for, essentially, if you like, making the numbers add up in the medium term. So given that they want to have the ratio of debt to GDP falling mm -hmm. four or five years out, presumably. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the balance they're going to strike between mm -hmm. raising taxes or cutting government spending? And if the latter, uh, how they were expecting to achieve it? Uh, that is uh, the big question uh, indeed. Thank you so much. It's You're been very welcome. To talk. Uh, pleasure to have you on.